Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Joining us today is Thomas Perilla, president of Perilla Investment Group. Thanks for joining us, Thomas. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a huge pleasure having you on Wall Street Silver. So, Thomas, there's so much turmoil uh, in the market right now, and Jerome Powell has uh, really trapped himself. And a lot of people agree it's a trap of his own making. How bad is the Federal Reserve's dilemma right now, and, and how will it affect uh, silver and gold? I think their dilemma is horrible. Uh, right now, it's a balancing act. They want to keep raising rates because they're worried about inflation. But the flip side of that is every time they raise rates, they break another regional bank. And on top of that, you've got an economy that is declining. Mm -hmm. So we've all been taught the same uh, rules since probably eighth grade economics. You know, you don't raise interest rates and drain liquidity into a declining economy. And that's exactly what we're doing. The problem I think they've all got right now is they're misinterpreting the inflation. Inflation was never caused by an overheating economy. It was caused by the breaking of the supply chain. Uh, they went into a lockdown, and when they did that, they just assumed they'd flip the switch and the supply chain would turn right back on. Right. And what they found is that just doesn't work like that in the real life. So I think as they get the shelves all restocked and they get you know food back on shelves, you're starting to see food inflation come down. I think the inflation is going to come down as we get the supply chain back up and more back to normal. Uh, on the inflation side, though, uh, that's tricky because right now, if, if they can't get the supply chain fixed fast enough, they're going to continue to raise rates. And if they continue to raise rates, they're going to break more banks. Uh, Pac West is probably holding on by a thread right now. Right. Uh, Western Alliance, Zion, you know, First National Bank. I, you can go through a list of probably 15 of them. Uh, I would say if they keep raising rates, you're going to lose two or three more fairly soon. Every time you do that, you know, how does that affect the silver gold market? I think people look at that and say, geez, I, right now I own dollars are sitting in the bank. I thought that was my savings. I can't even get to it right now. Right. Is it safe? Is it secure? Uh, if I hold physical gold or silver, I know what I've got. It's in my hands. I control my own destiny. And I think as a whole country, we've got to start looking to become more sustainable in, in, that, in just that facet of your, of your life, your financial aspects. You've got to take more control of it and, and not worry about the government. In Powell's case, I think he's backed himself into a corner where he's sitting there right now saying, geez, you know, if I stop raising rates, the dollar is going to correct. Right. And that's the last thing they want. Uh, in my opinion, right now, you got the dollar index sitting around well, 103. I think you're going to see correct maybe as low as 70 to 75. I think the only thing holding it up right now is the interest rates. Uh, they hike rates and that puts uh, strength into it. And the other piece is it's one of the last fiat currencies still standing. So just as, you know, money's been flowing into it because there was nowhere else for it to go. Mm -hmm. But at some point, it has to stand on its own accord. And when you look at it, you say, okay, what, what backs this fiat currency up? And all you see is a mountain of debt. Uh, and, and it just keeps getting bigger. I mean, I'm sure what's going to happen this week or next week, they're going to reach some type of a debt agreement, uh, yeah. raise the debt ceiling. The stock market will probably jump four or 500 points the second they announce it. And it's going to be some big celebration. And it's so ridiculous when you think about it. We're <laughs> celebrating our debt going higher. And, you know, we're just digging our own financial. It's absolutely crazy, uh, yeah, Thomas. We're celebrating as we do it. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. All of a sudden, you have that moment where, the, you know, the, the straw that broke the camel back, backs moment. And you don't know when that's coming. But it's that one extra piece of debt that finally hits the market and the market says, that's it. We can't take it anymore. And then you get a huge dollar correction. And right. I think if you're sitting in physical gold, silver, platinum, I think you're sitting in an area where you're going to be able to sustain that uh, until we get a new system in place. And so where do you see, Thomas, like because you're saying if supply chains ease down and inflation goes a little bit lower, does, will that give uh, Powell a little bit of room to uh, pause or lower interest rates? And what happened? A lot of people think in the uh, precious metals community that the second that uh, Powell pauses or lowers rates, precious metals are going to skyrocket gold and silver. Are you on that same page or no? 100%. Yeah. And, and that's why I've been telling people right now, you should be systematically adding your positions. You know, if gold and silver go down, so what? Just keep stacking it, keep grabbing right. it. It's cheap. Um, I think the second he announces, you know, a pivot where they're actually going to make a, churn, a turn. Right now, they, they kind of announced they're going to go to a pause and a wait and see. Mm -hmm. But I think what will happen is right now, there's about a 40% chance they're going to raise rates in June. 
If they do that, they're going to break, I'll bet you they break two more banks, maybe three. Wow. Uh, and at that point, Powell's going to have to go ahead and make a decision, then that's it. And when they pivot, I would say, you know, gold probably is 22, 2400 real fast. I think silver is probably 30 bucks real fast. And it's quite possible if you get through 30 with volume, I think you could easily see 50. Um, you know, we've seen it, you know, that several different times. You know, gold and silver, when you look at the two of them combined, uh, silver will always move more aggressively in both directions. Mm-hmm. I remember during the credit crisis, uh, silver went clear down to like $13, I think. Oh, I think. <laughs> nice. And then turned in a blink of an eye, it was 30 So, you know, the poor guy who gave up and said, that's it, I'm out. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and unloaded it you know, 13. Uh, he turned around and it, you know, literally in a blink of an eye, it was back at 30. And, and it, that kind of goes back to your, you know, the original thing. Just continue to add your positions as you go along. I mean, I see things right now. Some of these things are kind of staggering. Uh, right now at the COMEX, there's 22 uh, paper ounces versus one ounces of one ounce of silver. Yeah, that's insane. It's criminal. Uh, I mean, how can that even be allowed? Uh, but it is, and you know, if you look at the gold market right now, gold is 4.3 paper ounces versus one physical. So, between the two, I mean, silver, I would say, is the better buy of the two, although I Absolutely. think I would, I'd still split my purchases. Uh, but when you have 22 paper ounces to one, uh, that tells you right there some of the bullion banks are really been playing games that are just ridiculous, and they can't do that for much longer because the problem they're having now, the market has changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. In the old days, they'd come in with those raids in the middle of the night and it'd trigger selling and they got what they wanted. They could cover some of their shorts. But now every time the price drops, physical demand goes up. So it just keeps draining their vault. So again, they're kind of digging their own grave, uh, just like we are financially in the U.S. Every time they go ahead and do, raid the market and drop prices, retailers come in and physically demand physical delivery and right. they drain the vault. So Comex is kind of getting trapped as well. I, I think they're going to have to let the price move more in a, a fair, fair way. I mean, because the whole idea of these markets would be free and fair markets. Absolutely. And, and, right, and right now it's not. Absolutely. And you see, uh, like, as looking at the Comex, you see for the past year, two, past three years, there's been a huge, uh, there's been a huge drain from the Comex for all silver. But let's take a look into the future. Do you think it'll ever hit zero? Yeah, I think they're in real danger of that. I mean, they're trying to put a bottom in it where they're always telling people that we have X amount there. Right. Uh, but I think it would be almost impossible for it to hit zero. But you know, look what happened in the nickel market. You know, things broke and all of a sudden, you know, it just exploded. You could see a similar event take place in silver. I mean, to have it go to zero would be really tough uh, because I, I think they'd have to pull themselves together. Governments would pull together. They'd try to save the COMEX every way they could. But yeah, I think there's a real you know, there's a real risk of that happening. Uh, but I would say that's probably doubtful. Uh, but I don't think it needs to go to zero. I, I think right, right now the supply demand is so far in favor of of you know there's so much demand swapping the supply. I think a, as interest rates begin to stall and then you know, the Fed starts dropping, I think that'll start to be reflected in the price. Mm-hmm. And, and all of a sudden it'll go to thirty, and all of a sudden it'll be at fifty, and then everybody will say, okay, now it reflects a little more what it should. But you know, I think people forget, you know, gold and silver. Uh, I love I love gold, but I mean, you know, gold. About ten percent of gold is used in industrial. The rest of it is, you know, made into bars, coins, whatever. Right. Uh, currency. Uh, silver is fifty percent. Now, the question I would have uh, when you're looking at uh, silver for industrial applications, if it's fifty percent now and you've got the electric vehicles coming. I mean, there's no way around. I mean, yeah, who doesn't who doesn't get their silver, uh, Thomas, at the end? Because if the green revolution is coming and you see all the silver that's going to be taken out from the mines, and will the investors not get their silver? Will it go just straight to uh, industry? Like, where does it go? You know, I think it's going to be a fight over it, and that's and that's where the supply demand comes in. I think the supply demand issue is going to get worse. So, just to, from basic economics, prices have to go higher. Mm-hmm. Uh, our car companies, this is the part I think people aren't realizing, our automobile companies are now mining companies. Uh, General Motors, Ford, I mean, you're going to have to have copper, lithium, silver, cobalt. Uh, you can't run those electric go-karts without it. And, yeah. and they're coming, you know, period. They're, they're, you know, there's no doubt about it. Now, it might be slow. It might go 10% of the cars and 25 to 30. But it, before you know it, it's going to be 90, 100% of electric vehicles. 
and they can't run without those four. Uh, and silver is going to be a big component of that. So when you count that in, you count solar panels into it. Uh, I would see, you know, if silver is 50% demand being used for industrial applications now, it's quite possible you could see that rise as much as 70, 75%. Wow. Uh, if that's the case, I mean, there's no supply out there. Uh, what does that not, do to the price of silver then? Like once that comes, is it fits five, 10, 15 years out? What what does that do uh, to the price of silver if, if investors can't get? Uh, you know, can, it, you even, if, can you even put a price on it? <laughs> it's very hard to put a price on it. Yeah, because right now, it, if, if you looked at uh, silver now and said, okay, the Fed pauses, maybe we go to 30 or 50 now. Mm-hmm. In a situation like that, where the electric vehicles and the green revolution eats up the rest of the supply, are you looking at $500, $700 silver? Uh, you, you very likely could. Uh, it would make sense. And I think, uh, you know, from a mining point of view, uh, your junior miners right now. I think there's going to be a real rush for people to grab assets in the ground. Mm-hmm. So if you're a junior miner out there and you're doing all your well tests and you're proving out your property, my guess is you're going to get gobbled up in the next two, three years. Uh, that would probably be the place I'd see the most mergers and acquisitions coming. But if I was an investor, that's what I would focus on. I'd go out and look for the companies right now that are doing a lot of drill testing and a lot of proving out their property. Because once that's done and you know the mineralization, you know it's in the in the ground, mm-hmm. then somebody big like a new monitor, you know, somebody like that will step in and scoop you up. Uh, you know, Sprott, you know, he's he's all over the junior miners. Uh, and, and he's a fairly smart guy. I mean, I see him up there. Uh, he just took a position. I think it was Goliath Resources up there in D.C. He took a, uh, about a 10% position in that. And I think he does that in a lot of them. He's kind of sticking his toe in the, the water. And letting them prove out the property, and then if it, it's proved out, then he'll step in and scoop it up. Mm-hmm. I With think you're going to see a mad rush for those assets in the ground in both mm-hmm. gold, silver, and platinum. Mm-hmm. With all the chaos in the market right now, uh, where are you putting uh, your money, or where is Perilla Group putting their money? Are you like straight physical gold, physical silver, pl- like palladium, platinum, anything other than silver and gold? You know, uh, physical gold and silver. Uh, yeah, got a couple of mines down in New Mexico, and uh, it's about 50% gold and 50% silver out of each mine. I don't have any platinum right now, mm-hmm. but I, I buy that just from a, a retail point of view. But yeah, I, I would absolutely be a, be a buyer of physical gold, silver, and platinum. There's some other ones like rhodium I would be a buyer of, but it's very hard to find that in physical form, and it's very expensive. Yeah. Right. A lot of people have it sitting in like an ore concentrate pile. But again, it's very hard to extract it from that pile and, and pretty costly. But I would say those are the main ones. If, if a person wanted to, you know, maybe be a little more exotic, I mean, maybe you dip your toe into some like strategic minerals, uh, maybe like floor spar, things like that. You know, I think you're going to see a lot of tax breaks coming for our strategic minerals here in the next couple of years because they want to get away from any reliance on China. And so I think the United States, Canada, Australia, you're, you're going to see a lot of tax breaks in those areas. But me personally, it's strictly physical gold and silver, uh, and I trickle in some platinum. And, and I'd, I'd like to bump my platinum up. Uh, the issue is at the mines, we don't take any platinum out of our mines, so I have to buy that retail. Yeah, and uh, you absolutely well said. And just getting uh, getting back to the turmoil with the economy, I know we talked a little bit earlier about uh, Janet Yellen and everything with the debt ceiling that's happening. She's saying that uh, there's an economic catastrophe coming, but you don't think that they'll they'll be uh, a default. You think that they'll make a deal eventually this week, correct? They'll make a deal. Yeah, if not this bluffing. week, next week. Yeah, and if it's not next week, they'll find a way to extend the default. Uh, they're not going to let the United States go into default. Right. Um, it'd be disastrous if they did that. The flip side of that is it's almost disastrous if they do it, you know, because right. there's yeah, yeah. a reason they did. So <laughs> we're not that far away from a period right now. They're making a big deal that, you know, we're paying as much interest now, more interest on the debt than we are for our national defense. Right. Wait until we get to the point where you're using all the money from your treasury sales just right. to pay. That's not that far away. And then you have to make serious decisions. You know, do you close overseas bases? Do you bring troops home? Where do you cut spending at? Um, do you cut it from social programs? I mean, right now you got people that are barely struggling to feed themselves. You got to cut that. Uh, you know, it, yeah. you, you then, have to make and elections. Hard. Elections are coming. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. They're going to want to spend like crazy into that. Yeah. yeah. 
no matter what our debt is now, I would say in a blink of an eye, it's going to be 35, 36 trillion. Wow. And before you know it, it's going to be 45 or 50. And the question is, where's the breaking point? And if it doesn't break right away, does it now trade down to say like uh, the index down to like 70 and that's the new normal. And then maybe a few years from now, it trades down to 50 and that's the new normal. But you're going to continue to see the dollar devalued. And that's the part people don't understand. Uh, a house that costs 150000 now, you could have probably bought for 25000 years ago. Right. I'm here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Mercier's University years ago was 10000 a year to go to school. Now it's uh, 58000 Oh, Yeah, you know, it, that's crazy. Insane. Yeah, it, it, uh, And that's the part that people don't understand. Why, you know, They just say, oh, that's inflation. Well, why was the inflation caused? It was caused because you devalued your currency. Yeah, and absolutely. They don't argue that. that. That's the point. It's amazing. No one goes to the street. No one, you know, there's no protest about it. <laughs> but they're literally stealing, you know, from your future uh, right in front of your eyes and you're letting them do it. And wow. I think it's going to continue because I don't see any other way. I mean, who's going to buy our treasuries without quantitative easing? Yeah, nobody. And what an insane theory that is. You know, years from now, they're going to teach this in business class and people are going to laugh about it. <laughs> so, so you have, you want to sell debt, but no one will buy it. So you create some other corporation that you basically own to buy your debt. <laughs> it's uns, you know, if yeah. a person could do that, it'd be great. That's oh, crazy. Yeah, you know, every time you wanted to buy a car, you just, you know, purchase your own debt and go buy a car. <laughs> it doesn't make any uh, financial sense at all. Uh, I think years from now, they're going to look back at when we went off the gold standard with Nixon and Kissinger as one of the greatest mistakes we ever, we absolutely. ever made. Absolutely, yeah. Well, you, know, you go back to that era, there's a lot of mistakes you look at. I mean, you know, they always say uh, Nixon was uh, such uh, one of his greatest events was opening China. Mm -hmm. well, I just saw the other day, China is now the number one steel producer in the world. Wow. Well, I grew up in Youngstown, Ohio. How did that help anybody in Youngstown, Ohio? It didn't, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> maybe it helped Coca-Cola, maybe it helped McDonald's, you know, <laughs> KFC. But how did it help? You know, right now I see a growing middle class in China. And I see a shrinking middle class in America. Wow. I just don't see how that helped us in any in any way. Um, other than the the large multinationals, I think made out pretty well. But I'd say the the middle class is getting squeezed horribly bad. And Absolutely. with robotics and AI coming, I think the middle class is going to get squeezed even harder. And that's Absolutely. where you got to worry down the road. You know, where does the income come from our our government? Where does the tax revenue come from? Um, you know, how do you get the economy to continue to grow at the pace you need to, especially right. with that load sitting on top of you? Right. Well, you know, everything you talked about today is uh, has been really spot on, and we we appreciate you coming down to Wall Street, Silver Thomas. And hopefully, as the market develops, we can have you back on. Hopefully, gold. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we, we'll see what hap what happens in the next two three months with Powell. And uh, yeah, it would be great to have you back on. It'd be a huge. Pleasure. I'd love to be on. I love what you guys do, and I think you're doing a real Thank service you. to people too, because. Right now, investors just don't understand. But if they go to their bank one day and it's closed, like we we've been seeing, yeah, what do you do then? You know, and that's why I encourage people: don't even hold your metals at your safety deposit box. Find a way to hold it at a, you know a safe box in your own home or in your house. Make it so that you can get at it because don't count on your bank being open when yeah, you don't ready. trust it. Yeah, but well, yeah, so I, I think you guys are doing a great job. So thanks thank for having. You. Me. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. Take care.